Hello everyone, happy Friday and welcome to Lawrence Plays for another episode of Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2. And the big thing I did in the last stream was redesign how the science park works. So previously I had this little collection of um, computers over here, what are, what are the research servers over here. And they were set up and they were they were working, they were producing Science Pack 1. Um, but then I remember that in order to produce Science Pack 2, you need to put in some Science Pack 1. So as, as, as you work through the... Um, as you work through the science packs, you build science pack one out of beryllium, significant data, catalogs and insights, and some cool coolant. We don't care about that too much. Then the second one requires error frame pole, which is modified beryllium, significant data, catalog and insight, which is similar. It's different catalog, but basically the same. But you also need the Astro Science Pack 1. Then to make the threes, similar, but with scaffolds and, and uh, comprehensive packs, and then also science pack two. And then for the fours, yada yada yada, and also science pack threes. So as you can see, each and each extra step you do requires the previous one. So that means that 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 would mean that if I was making the science pack ones here and then the science pack twos here, as I was originally planning to, that would mean I'd have to have some sort of system that fed the packs back round over to here, and that'd be a little bit weird, um, and also very very spaghetti, and just it just didn't really fit in the space I'd left for it. So I thought actually, if I'm going to be doing a bit of a redesign here, let's let's redesign with the future in mind and just rip up all of this and start again. And so, what I've done here is I've got, well, actually, these these uh, long-handled inserts at the top are not necessary. They're just, they were just put in there um, because I copied and pasted a previous previous chunk of the design. Um, but the way this system works now is you've got the uh, the standard things that are coming in for absolutely everything running across the middle here. So you've got the insights going across the middle, and the significant data would be on the bottom side of this belt if we had enough of them being, being made, which we don't, and that's kind of my fault, and I'll touch on that in a moment. But those would be coming down the middle, as you can kind of see down here, if we look, if we squint between these uh, two, between these underground belts over here. Then we can feed in the, the uh, particular catalog types at the bottom, like that and like that, and, and that will mean they'll, they'll go onto the correct buff belts. And I'm rather pleased with this bit. You can then have them uh, filtered off by these uh, splitters over here. Now, in hindsight, what I perhaps could have done that might have made this slightly simpler would be to put the things that are used by all of them, the significant data and the insights, onto one belt, and then have the other belt just straight up stop after the after the uh, science uh, after the research servers, and then another belt come in with the other things on. But as it's fallen out, it's actually quite neat because I can now bring in. Well, if I had any beryllium, and that's the problem that I'm uh, obliquely referring to, if I had any beryllium, it could come down here as plates, and it would drop onto the top side of the belt here. Uh, and with the um, with the inside with the significant data still on the bottom side, we then have two of the inputs coming along here, and as you can see, with the uh, with the catalogs coming in here, we've got two of the inputs on the bottom as well. So that means these two belts then carry all of the inputs I need to make Science Pack One. They're then unloaded by these inserters onto the. Have I got them on, are these unloading onto the near side of the belt? I think I might. Oh no, the far side of the belt. So these are unloading onto onto the belt up here as as normal, and that flows off down here. So this is going to be unloading the junk data cards and the science packs. So they will they'll go out there. Then those flow through here, and in this this area, we're then t using we, we've then got exactly the same thing down here that's grabbing in the various inputs along here. So we've got a machine up here that's pulling in iron, making iron sticks to make the beryllium poles that then come down here and drop onto the top side of the belt. The catalogs on the bottom, everything's in here. All those four things are in here. But then we've also got these inserters that will grab the science pack ones off this belt and put them into the machine as well. So we then get all of the inputs we need. Great, that works really nicely. And then we can then use these inserters, and these ones are dropping onto the near side of the belt. So at that point we've got the uh, we've got the um, science pack ones on the top side and science pack twos on the bottom side. Uh, there's also the junk data cards on there as well, but we'll we'll gloss over that for now because it's sort of irrelevant. This belt then kinks up over here, and we've got a long-handled inserter that can grab the uh, tier two science packs off here and put them into these machines to get the tier three running. And then over here we'll bring in the scaffolds on this belt and the catalogs along here once we've actually made them. They can all go into the processing system, and we'll make the tier three catalog, which can be put onto the top side of the belt. And then over here, pull them off into the machines for making the four, and put them onto the bottom side of the belt. So this whole this system here is quite small, neat, and compact, and it just brings all of the science packs together. And I'm actually quite pleased with the way it's come with the way the way I built it, the way it's all come together, I feel like it, it it works nicely. Conveniently, all of these machines use the same cold thermofluid, so we can pull that in for all of them into here, and then spit out the warm, so we can bring that out and pass it around to be re to be cooled down again and, and, and then recycled. Then on the output over here, we have a couple of splitters that will pull out the junk data cards and dispose of them down the down down a disposal chute over here, which could go then can go off and go onto the usual disposal chute to be got rid of and to feed everything else as you as you as you're used to as you've seen with many many other systems. And that and then we've got the uh, the science packs all will all flow up these two belts 
over here and as you can see we've got some tier one and tier two astro catalog uh, astro science packs along here ready to be loaded into the science machine over here so that all working absolutely brilliantly very very happy with all of that it's it, these systems are I say I'm, I'm quite proud of this it feels like a nice neat compact system and yeah generally very very happy with it so of course that means I've made another copy of it up here this is doing exactly the same thing but for the energy sciences and up here Tristan's been a bit more um, productive than I have so we've actually got a good supply of everything going on here so you can see we've got all of the uh, all of the catalogs coming in and the insights coming out here so they flow around here to go down to be made into significant data and then up here to go into the into the science there's okay we don't have tier three and four catalogs coming through yet but that's okay eventually we will and, and then we can set that up there's a, an underground belt there that's a bit weird that should not be there this ki this break in the belt is deliberate because we can't program the filters on this in, on this splitter yet uh, because we don't know uh, at the moment we aren't able you aren't able to program it with anything that you haven't researched yet so this does this needs to be oh actually no we can now because Tristan's research comprehensive energy catalog so I could set that flip it over to the other side and then rotate this belt and now when we do get threes and fours coming through here we can pass those along and everything will work really nicely along here Oop, well, there's a gap there now I suppose it's slightly better and so this this show this shows better than the example I was showing with the Astro what's what's going on here so we've got the we've got the catalogs sorry no we've got the significant data and the insights flowing along the middle two um, paths uh, middle two belt sides along here and then we're feeding in the holmium cables here and the catalogs here and presumably this is now capable of making everything we've got a backlog of the energy packs yeah we've, well we've got a backlog of energy science one there I'm not sure why energy science two has Stopped. Oh, actually, yes, I am. I know why this has failed. I might need to make a change to this design because the problem here is that um, is that basically we're producing we're producing the Energy Science One here, um, and they're producing the junk data cards and the Energy Science One packs. These machines are then picking up the Energy Science Ones to make Energy Science Two, but they're not picking up the junk data cards, which means we're getting which means this area underneath here is now just completely full of junk data cards rather than rather than allowing the science pack one rather and then because the science pack ones aren't flowing there aren't there isn't anywhere to take these out so what i'm going to need to do is put in actually that's going to need to come up there instead of here i'm going to need to put in another splitter here in order to get rid of the uh, the junk data cards and then have and then somewhere somewhere along here we're going to and then somehow get that belt out of here and along and possibly along the top that's going to be a bit interesting a bit fiddly so maybe we'll make this one go underneath underground and then, then there'll be a little bit more space but something like that around here is going to be required in order to get this system in order in order to get the junk data cards out so that we can carry on making the uh, the science pack ones and it's slightly embarrassing to have run into this problem because i had a very similar problem in my 0.5 playthrough where there were too many junk data cards on the system that were blocking up the uh, blocking up the, the, the taking out the science packs because I hadn't done things in the right order. So yes, we need to get rid of the junk before we start to try and use them. So if I do that here and then we can copy that down to here as well and then and then that'll start to work much more nicely. Um, I just didn't plan that properly, which is why we have lots and lots of tier one en uh, energy science packs along here, but we've run out, completely run out of tier two. So that's a little bit unfortunate. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, need to fix that in the, in the next episode. Part of getting this working was reprogramming the trains and the stations. So we now, as you can see here, we're unloading uh, tier one catalogs and tier two catalogs, and these are monitoring what's in the sta what's in the station. So we see when we, this one will only run when there's less than two thousand in here, which there is of both of them. So both these belts are running, and over here it's very very similar. So we will unload the train merrily over here, and then put it out, pass it out onto the in, in, into the system to be to be used. Um, that's that's working i programmed that up and the same down here with the astro and the trains well i did the astro train i think tristan actually did the uh did the energy strain because that's the one he's been playing with so as you can see over here we're now gradually filling up with astro catalog one and even more gradually with astro catalog two but that's due to shortages over here in fact speaking of so we have a big shortage of beryllium just in general and it's because when i went out to talos i built what i was calling a, what i've been calling a sort of a proof of concept design over here so this is i mean it works it's just really slow and this is and so the reason it's so slow is because i came out here and i built this up before we developed beacons so whilst i did go through and put in some productivity modules into the system in order to get a little bit more output for the amount of input we're get, getting these machines are now all running really rather slowly um, because they're, they're 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 being slowed down by the productivity modules and they're not being sped up by beacons so this system won't do it's it's too, it's too slow we need we need some improvements in here so uh, there's been a little bit of 
a little bit of improvement done. Tristan's put in some more, I think he put in some more furnaces over here perhaps, and some more casting machines to make sure that we are running as fast as this number of pulverizers will let us. And and we are. You can see there's no there's no backlogs on any of the any any of these layers in here. So we are pumping it through as fast as we can. The problem is if we look at if we look at the production graph and at uh, ingots, you can see if we look back over the last hour or so um, at the beryllium ingots, which are way down here because they're being done relatively slowly, um, they're being produced at a rate of up to 15 per minute, uh, which isn't enough which isn't great and an average of 11.8 where we've been using them well in, bur in burst somewhat but it's coming out to 170 per minute so there's a there's a bit of a problem here should we say we need to be producing the uh, the beryllium a lot faster now um, all of the other met all of the other exotic materials are, are being produced a bit quicker the holmium is well it seems to max out about here but the holmium doesn't seem to be a problem yet we are we're using it not using it faster than we're producing it so that's basically okay uh, the iridium we're producing at a potentially a potentially crazy rate and using it at a relatively slow rate oh, actually I say that that's 40 46 per minute and being used at 34 per minute so I mean it's sufficient but it's not quite as crazily more as I thought it was going to be um, but still no matter what no matter what we're looking at the brilliant at the moment it's woefully inadequate we need we need a massive boost to production so that's going to be something I'm going. To, that's something I've, I've been working on. I've put together a bit of a sort of a sketch of a of a an improved system, which you can actually you can see running over here. Um, but I haven't. But I've only built that in the in the d blueprint designer for now. It needs to be placed down over here on Talos, and I need to do some other up, some further upgrading as well. That's going to be a story for next week, though. So I won't talk about that too much because you know spoilers. Uh, next week we should be we should be working on all of this. And so that that shortage of beryllium is limiting the amount that can be brought in into this delivery cannon chest here and past all the way across to here and then brought down to be made in to be made into the plates to then be made into the frames and so as you can see down here we've we've run out of frames we're not getting any exposed frames through here all this is all so all of this is sort of grinding to a halt there's a bit of a there is a bit of supply down here oh, oh no there isn't we've run out of the we've run out of the um visible uh, the visible data uh, of cards there so that's unfortunate and then down here i've expanded the number of telescopes making the uh, microwave data and the number of telescopes making the x-ray data. The x-ray data seems to be absolutely happy. It's, it's completely caught up, but that's probably just because there's more um, telescopes over here uh, because they're smaller. And it's the and the uh, the microwave data is so, so limited that we just can't we can't use. Basically, we've got so little microwave data that we can't use up the x-ray data as fast as we want to. Um, are they actually different speeds as well? So this runs once every four seconds. This run once it runs once every 12 seconds. OK, so these are slower, but Oh, but they produce 12, whereas these only produce one each time they run. Okay, right, so these are massively, massively slower. So I'm going to need to either enormously extend this all the way out to about here, probably, or fill all of these up with speed modules. Um, I mean, they can be moduled. We can put four speed modules in there. We can put beacons in as well. We can make these. We can make each of these telescopes run much, much faster, merely at the cost of a load more electricity. Um, or we can put more of them in, which... Uh, it's probably slightly more damaging to the UPS, but also is, is, is significantly more. Uh, is, it uses less electric, le uses less power. That said, that said, we have plenty of power up here at the moment because we're in space where solar is far more effective, and it's easy to just slap down loads of it. You don't have to worry about it for stopping or stopping working overnight. These telescopes not using an enormous amount of power at the moment. So I think in general, I could I could I can probably go in and speed module these without feeling too bad about it, and that will help with the amount of X-ray data coming out. Uh, no, microwave data coming out except that we would then get through these frames a lot faster and we're already short of those so again that comes back to needing more beryllium as i said earlier if we looked at the um, the, the research being done down here you'll see actually that all, whilst we, whilst we as i said we have loads and loads of the uh, the microwave data none of x-ray data none of the microwave data um, because that's, so, that's getting used up as fast as it's produced we're also kind of short of the two gravitational data so this one's only backed up to here and this one and we've completely run out of apart from you know what's idly sitting on the, on the belt there so this is because we don't have enough of the multispectral analysis data coming through this one and that is limited by the uh, the green um, the visible data coming in fair but also we're using one of the older recipes for this so if we go in here and we have a look for the multispectral okay in here it's called astrometric data that'll be why I can't find it um, there are multiple recipes for producing this. So there's this one that uses this is the one. This is the one we're using at the moment, which you get first, where you use IR visible and UV. It builds the it builds the astrometric data. Fine. 
then you unlock the one that does all the same but with microwave and x-ray and produces 10 of it so instead of use instead of being three in three out you then go to five in and some blank data cards and 10 out so that's much more much more effective because you'll get far more far more data being produced for each uh, each each data card you scan however at the moment because we're so short of the microwave uh, specifically the microwave data uh, that's not quite so not quite so great but i think we will fairly soon have plenty of that so we can if, if we can speed this up sufficiently then we can pipe up from here we can pipe both these data cards back up here and bring them into the uh, bring them in over here into the um, in, in, into the multispectral analysis and, and get lots more astrometric data coming out. There is a third method as well, and that uses radio waves and gamma waves as well, and that will put then into you putting in seven, and it will spit out twenty. So that's going to be even even better. Um, but we haven't researched this one yet. That's an Astro three catalog three um, data data. So we, we we can't do that one yet. But we need to consider the, that we'll want to upgrade this at some point in the future. Now, when we do, this is going to be a little bit awkward because we're going to have eight different things going into one of these machines, and a solid, uh, not including the flip fluids, and a solid coming out. And you can only really get four things around it with the belts like this. Uh, sorry, eight. You can get four belts around, which is eight things. But we've got eight inputs and one output. So that's nine things. That's going to be a bit tricky. We're going to have to do some funny belt shenanigans. But fortunately, these are relatively large machines, so that's not going to be too difficult. There is going to be room to do some to do some funny business with the belts, should we say? So that'll be that'll be a bit of an up, a bit of an upgrade, and it will allow us to produce far more of this multispectral data. And 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 that'll be that'll mean we'll have far more science flowing through. Every, everything will everything will just generally work a bit better because we'll have far more far more of this available far more cheaply and things can then just run more nicely. So that's going to be another thing for me to do in the in the next um, episode in the next stream uh, potentially once I've got the beryllium up and running properly because I think that's probably my priority at the moment. Another problem we we're having last week with the uh, with the astroscience was the uh, was that we weren't producing the therm the cold thermofluids fast enough or at least there was insufficient cold thermofluid. Now you'd be pleased to note that now we have 100% this 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 pipe is 99.9% full, which, as far as I'm concerned, is basically full. that's that that's as good as full. There's plenty of it in here, and that's working very, very nicely. And part of the reason that's that's working is because we've now managed to bring over a bit more warm thermofluids. Oh no, we haven't actually. No, we've used it all up. So I put in quite a lot more of these radiators, and there's space to put in a few more as well. And I shoved in these beacons here, which are that which are meaning that the radiators are now running at uh, plus 180% of their normal speed. We are still using tier 2 modules everywhere because those are the ones that don't use any exotic ingredients, so they're quite cheap. Although that said, speed modules 3 probably doesn't use anything that... Oh no, it uses Immersite, which we have a massive shortage of at the moment. So yeah, we're not going to be we're not going to be making lots of speed module 3s for the time being. So yes, I put in all of these extra radiators. I put in lots of extra radiators. Now the upside of that is that they're now producing the, the uh, cool thermofluid more quickly. So that is getting churned through. Basically, as soon as we get any, uh, any, any warm thermofluid here, it gets chilled immediately and shoved into this pipe, which as you can see is full. So that's great. The only downside is putting in more radiators means each one of these has now absorbed another 1500 thermofluid. And that's why this tank is empty and why we're now, we now need another train load to come in. Just to, just to fill everything up, which is a little bit unfortunate. And all these ones along here with the red... Uh, red dots on them like that one are ones that don't have enough in them so this this one needs another almost 1500 uh, cold, uh, warm thermofluid before it start working so I do need another couple of train loads over here which is a little bit selfish and greedy because there is a shortage of thermofluid maybe I should turn this off for the time being uh, remind me on the, well, remind, remind me in the stream and I'll do that uh, at least for the time being so yes, that means this this pipe here is completely full. We've got enough cool thermofluid. We can pump that through to here. This is at 40,000, which is the limit that's been set here. So that's good. And that's being pumped through here. This is also full. And this is full. And this buffer tank here is full. And this buffer tank here is nearly full. So basically, we now have enough of all of the different thermofluids to keep everything absolutely happy. So I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with this. this. This system is now... This, this, this problem is solved, at least for the time being, and if we have problems in the future, it's just going to be a case of more throughput, so we'll need to put more, more radiators in, potentially more of the hyper, uh, hypercoolers as well. So... Yes, this is this is this is now finally a solved problem. <laughs> I've done some of the little bits of tidying I was talking about last week as well. So uh, this this pipe along here with the, uh, the the cold thermofluid in it now, in theory at least, will be emptied into the into the system over here because there is a pump to push it out. Um, at the moment, we don't seem to be using the cold thermofluid up all that much. So ooh, actually, what I could do, I suppose, is come down here. Yes, because this tank isn't full. If I flip that round, then that'll slurp it all out of this pipe. And then we can then pump it through from wherever it was down here. We go. So yeah, we can pump it out. Of the, we'll pull it out of this pipe, and now this pump can run, and that'll pull it out of this pipe here. So there we go. All half of it has gone already. 
so that'll that'll now reasonably quickly empty these em empty the uh, the pipes out. So we'll get rid of all of the all of the excess that was that was in here from when, from what we didn't need before. Um, oh, there's a little bit of it's going to be pulled through from this. Oh, we're still hang on, we're still making it. Stop that. <laughs> we don't want to do that, I don't think, because this cool this warm thermofluid no cool thermofluid along here is actually useful for this system. So we're going to need to pump it out of here as well. But at least we, that's that stopped us making it. We can get rid of all of this. This will now these pipes will now empty, as you see. They're 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 basically they're, they're now basically empty. They're flickering a little bit because they're not quite sure. But essentially, we've now managed to slurp all of that out of there, and that means we can come along here. We can decommission this bit here like that and then turn this and also turn this pump back around again so we fill to fill this pipe back up and so the system will now work as normal i don't know why i didn't think of that during the uh, during the stream because I'm, I'm now going to have to do all of that again in the stream just to get it working but i think it was kind of worthwhile just to show you guys what i'm planning to do here so while we're looking at the science area once again tristan was helping me out a little bit with getting the uh, all of the, getting some of the fixes I'd, 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 I'd been working on over here up and working properly because um there, there were a couple of glitches i'd missed i think i hadn't filtered out the uh, the cards properly on the way out of here i got the belt the wrong way around because swapping my system over like this meant that now the uh, the ones and twos ended up on the top belt and the threes and fours on the bottom, which is the opposite of how it was before. So he's he's done a little bit of tidying up around here to make sure everything works properly. So he, um, I'm not sure I can put my finger on exactly what he's been doing, but he's generally he was generally very helpful with that. So thank you, thank you there. Um, oh yes, I remember what he did. He upgraded these uh, these machines along here to do, to do the uh, the tier two recipe. So now instead of taking in the uh, just the first first energy catalogs and outputting relatively small numbers of energy insights, he's now taking in the energy one and energy two and outputting slightly larger numbers of insights so that makes it a bit cheaper to produce all these insights we need we've also done that he's also done the same thing down here with the um with, with, the, with the astro unfortunately we've run out of the broad astro catalogs because of the aforementioned beryllium problems but uh so we'll, we'll go come up and look at this one because this is this is this one's actually working and so that means this means now we're producing them slightly the insights slightly more efficiently that did also require switching these um the, 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 the thermofluid it uses over to super cooled instead of merely cold um, and that meant, means uh, there's a little bit of a wiggle in the pipes over here um, to, in order to make that work but that's fine we're, we're okay we're okay with that um, and it's, it now means that the, the system is running in the more efficient way and the interesting thing is if we look at the um, the, the recipes for the insights uh, energy insights. So, you, as, as you say, as, as I was saying, we've got this one where you take in one energy catalog and produce two, and it uses the cold thermofluid. We've upgraded to using two energy catalogs to produce eight. So that's literally. Uh, so we bring in twice as much on the input, getting four times as much on the output. So it is twice as good. But we have to use super cool thermofluid. The next upgrade is an easy one. Um, no, it isn't. The next upgrade is a, is, a, is a slightly tricky one because then you need to put in blank data cards as well. I mean, that's not the end of the world. We can run another belt along the top here with blank data cards being passed in. It would mean we'd need to have a supply of blank data cards here, though, which is slightly tricky. Um, we'll, we'll think about that, how we want to do that in, in, the, in, uh, in the future. But then the fourth one is... Oh, no, actually, that's interesting. Oh, here we go. This is what I think. So energy... The Right, so the first one produces blank data cards. So we have we have a system over here that's capable of dealing with and getting rid of the blank data cards. There's a filter across there. The second one doesn't do anything. The third one requires blank data cards, and as does the fourth one. Now I'm pretty sure in Space Exploration 0.5, one and two, one and two are outputted blank data cards. Three didn't do anything, and then four in needed an input of blank data cards. So the ratios and recipes have been changed a little bit here, and that meant that um, when you when you came when you when you went from one to two, you had to uh, switch from using cold thermofluid to super cold thermofluid. So that was a little bit of a, a thought, a challenge, an extra thing you had to do. And then when you went from three to four, you had to switch from taking away the um, the blank data cards to bringing them in. And so again, that was another slight complication for for up for the upgrades in there. But it looks like we're going to need to start bringing them in here sooner than I expected. Now we do produce quite a lot of blank data cards around here because this system, uh, oh no, it produces junk. Some of somewhere around here, this one produces blank data cards. Uh, in quite large numbers, so we'll need to do the maths around this to work out whether the, whether the number of them that are coming out here is going to be enough to keep all of these insight machines happy. And I suspect it might not be, but we'll, as I say, we'll look at the numbers a bit more carefully and and, and decide it at some point in the future. Tristan is also in continuing the theme of working on energy science. He's improved things over here quite a bit. Um, starting off with putting in more radiators for the coolant up here. So as as as, as I discovered, we you know, especially I think it's part at least partly because I upgraded to the efficient um, cooling therm thermofluid 
the efficient cooling thermofluid recipe, which takes twice as long to, to cool the thermofluid down, so you need twice as many radiators. So that's been expanded, which is fine. Uh, down here, he doesn't need, need quite as much of the other ones yet, just yet, but um, he probably will sooner or later. Although it seems like Astro seems to need a lot more coolant than the other ones. Maybe that's the, the challenge with Astro, So he, because he, each science pack has its own sort of slightly different challenges. He's improved the rate that he's producing the Tier 2 um, energy science cards at down here. So we've got... Um, and actually, oh, we seem to have got... Yes, we've got some of the um, some of the material ones coming in now. I think so. Tristan's managed to get some material science packs delivered from um, from Mike's area over on the other side. So that means he's now able to start making this material energy testing, whatever it's called, atomic data, which uses the material testing packs and bombards them with ion stream. Um, so he's now started being able to make those, and that means he's now able to make the tier two uh, energy science catalogs. As as we saw, I mean, we, we we already knew about that, but that means now he's got all four of those running down here. He's got everything running at a reasonable rate, except for this one, which seems to be lagging a little bit behind that said all of these machines are running and therefore i think actually it means it's probably reasonably balanced it's just these are balanced against these ones he doesn't need any more this is going quite nicely so yes we've got the uh, got the energy catalogs twos coming out here go flowing flowing up here and then being sorted out by the splitter and put into the trains as, as, as mentioned before these these are over here will again check that, we, that we're not putting too much of anything into into the um, into the warehouses so that's working nicely and we can then be loaded into the train He's also put it in the uh, the data research servers for doing the for doing the, the energy three catalogs, uh, but hasn't got any of the inputs for that yet. So I guess that's what these machines down here are. These, this this will be his uh, his notes for making the next tier of energy sciences, I imagine. He's also boosted the rate of tier one production as well to make sure it keeps up with the uh, the rate that is being used at the other end. So that's why we now have a decent supply of uh, why we have a good basically that's why we have a good supply of all of the energy catalogs over on the other side. And, and, and unlike the Astro, it's because Tristan's put in the effort to make sure that these are all filling up reasonably quickly. So as you can see, tier one's produced nice and quickly. The train is full. Tier two is being produced a little bit more slowly. It is gradually, but it is gradually filling the train up. It's probably fine. We'll see. We'll see how it goes once we start doing trying to do energy researches. I suppose. <laughs> He's had to boost the uh, recycling of scrap, apparently. So we've now got a bigger... This, that'll be a bigger area of, uh, of these machines over here. So that's probably... Well, <laughs> yeah, you can see there's a lot of scrap coming through here. Uh, there's a lot of this is contaminated scrap as well. So I did notice that just over here, one of Tristan's um, construction things... Yes, here we go. This one is producing large quantities... In fact, both of these are producing large quantities of contaminated scrap. So, as before, we don't need to worry about any of this. It all just gets dumped straight out onto the disposal belt and just to be taken away and, and dealt with elsewhere. Um, the elsewhere is only just over here, so it's not it's not exactly a long way away. But it does mean we've now got this flow of all of this scrap and, and energy and, and, and contaminated scrap and all and the memory cards and all this sort of stuff flowing through here. The scrap is filtered out as you'd expect. The contaminated carries on down here. So we're probably going to need a boost on the contaminated scrap processing at some point. It seems to be keeping up at the moment, actually. Um, but I think it's only, it's probably not, it, yeah, it looks like it's quite busy. We are, it's running more or less solidly. So I think we're going to need to boost this at some point fairly soon. Probably in the next, effort, probably in the next stream. But, but the, the whole system is designed with all this expandability in mind. So I don't see that being a problem. Um, the scrap over, on the other hand, apparently that was too, there was too much of that coming through. So again, as I say, put in extra machines. That's now happily processing it. And that means we're going to be getting more iron, more copper and more rare metals and probably and more stone coming through over here. So these are all getting built up. Eventually, uh, Mike will be taking these away in order to make, in order to make the material packs, I believe. Um, but at the moment, there is, well, the iron... I was going to say, the, the iron and the copper are being taken away to be made into other things. That's not actually true. The, the iron seems to now have backed up, and we've got several... We've got 26,000 stacks... 26,000, sorry, um, iron plates in these in, in the uh, in, in storage here. So that's going to need a train to come and take it away at some point. I did tweak the uh, the copper priority, as I was talking about in last week's video, though. So now that's... We're using this more, slightly more... It's a higher priority for making the memory cards and everything else that's going, going on down here. So... We're using up the copper as fast as we can. The iron, on the other hand, we we, we seem to have plenty of it. Um, oh, actually, that said, that's set to 300. These are set to a the these are set to a thousand. So actually, this needs to be changed in the same way. So I should come in here and change this one to 3,000. I should have thought of that when I did the other one last time. So yeah, we are. It looks like for at least the the short term future, we are going to be using up all of the iron down here, and that's being made into sulfuric acid, I think. Uh, for, yes, down here it's made in sulfuric acid for refurbing the, the battery packs. And I think it might be being used for something else. Yes, it's also being used for the uh, for the thermofluid as well. So everything goes into thermofluid. Uh, so yeah, that, that'll carry on using up the uh, the, the iron for, for, for a good long time. Looking here, we seem to have... Yeah, we don't seem to have a great deal of thermofluid available in these in the station. Maybe a train's just been and picked some up. I don't know. So back over to what Tristan's been up to. <laughs>
He also says he's boosted the chemical gel production, so that'll be these extra three machines over here, because apparently we had sufficient um, sufficient petroleum gas. And we do. So maybe... I mean, I don't know what's changed there. I did upgrade the um, the inserters on uh, on down on Norvis to, to to stack inserters, which would have given a, a tiny, tiny increase. I wouldn't have thought it'd be more than about 10%, but it seems to be now keeping up quite nicely. So yeah, we have we have a good supply of petroleum gas here. So yeah, having more chemical gel production is a good idea because now we can start to stockpile it in, in the station here and make the uh, make the thermofluid a bit faster. So yeah, well done there. That's that's def definitely going to be definitely going to be very very useful. Uh, in fact, we've got we've got 80,000 in the in the in the station and plus another 60,000 in the trains. So loads of it going on there. That's 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 pretty good. And finally, on Tristan's done list, uh, there's been he's, he's he's done a bit of sort of, uh, of um, looking looking after the bus. So over here, we, he's made he's got us making more pipes now. So it looks like these these machines over here are making the pipes a bit faster to pass them around to under here where they can oh, so they can be made into underground pipes because underground pipes are being made very very slowly. The theory is it, it, the theory the theory is with all of these sort of things um, is that it doesn't these machines don't have to be producing it all that quickly. As long as you keep a steady supply of everything they need, then they'll build you'll build up massive buffers of everything. As you can tell by the fact we've got a few thousand. Um, uh, scaffolding in, in, in these machines uh, in, in these chests and then we've got 116 hmm, underground pipes in here so this this is this is trying to build up until well until this this chest is full by the looks of it I don't see any any limiting fact limit limitations on here um, the problem is we're using these underground pipes up fairly quickly and we had a crisis of supply uh, in, in in the last stream we had a, we had a big problem with copper which I'm going to be talking about tomorrow and so we ran out of those completely, which means it's now because we're all building at fairly actively that the system doesn't have a chance to catch up, which is why Tristan's put in the system here to make the pipes a little bit faster to hopefully allow us to make the underground pipes a bit faster and maybe give us make it a little bit easier for us to catch up and get beyond, you know, 118 underground pipes, which isn't very many. We had similar problems with the underground belts as well. So uh, he might have put this in up here. That might already have been there. I honestly don't know. Um, he's also been doing a bit of tidying up of, of stuff that was along the bus that wasn't really necessary. So there's the uh, all of the um, the the energy one science that was cobbled in along here, no longer needed. Um, Oh, he's just said around the old energy science, so it's just just this sort of general area around here, make, making things a little bit a little bit neater, a little bit nicer. We should probably move um, solar panel production off somewhere else as well, because this is a little bit of a mess, uh, and we can also start bringing in mirrors from somewhere else as well. So we, we've got better ways of doing this, but that's quite a low priority on things we want to get done, because it's it basically it, it works and it's it's taking up quite a lot of space. Yes, but we're not actually trying to use that space for anything else at the moment, so. Who cares? Let's just leave it as it is. Oh, we are going to need to rebuild the rail production at some point. We've got four and a half thousand at the, um, at the moment, but we are. But they do. They take one of the energy catalogs, I believe, which is why they're being made here. So we're going to need to. Well, we've got energy catalogs being put in a train, so we could probably bring that onto the bus, or do, we could do something with that um, to keep that un under control and, and, and nice and, and just generally working at some point. We'll, we'll 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 see how what we think is the best way to do that. Finally, up in up, of, of the things that are happening up in Norbit, uh, Mike has also been very very busy over here on the other side. We've, he, we've now had an expansion. So if you remember in the last in the last uh, videos, I talked about bringing all of the ingredients in, chopping the chopping the ingots up here, bring them up over here to make into uh, to make into material science packs and that's gone well uh, although it has now unfortunately stalled due to a, uh, a massive shortage of uh, immersite which I shall be talking about uh, tomorrow as well um, <laughs> so yes lots of lots of things to talk about tomorrow but over here there's, there's these all these machines that are making the material science catalogs uh, passing and no making the material testing packs that's the one I meant uh, and then they're being brought down here put into a train to be taken off for, uh, for Tristan to use for his energy science and also brought up here for Mike to use for his his uh, material science um, he has overbuilt somewhat here because apparently there was some sort of misunderstanding uh, where he thought we were going for 100 science packs per minute and nobody quite knows where he's got that from because we've been talking about numbers like more like 16 per minute. Um, Although he did find somewhere where I'd misspoken and said 12 per second uh, in, in one of the other videos, so in one of the in one of the vods. So. Um, who knows? He's not—he's he's not gone to 12 per second, but he also hasn't. He also—he's also gone somewhat further than 16 per minute. Uh, that said, it doesn't really matter because all of this is just sort of copy pasted out. So it's the same design continued further across. The only thing that really it really matters for is the amount of input ingredients that are going to be going in. So I think this is probably going to be absolutely fine. We've got the um, we've got the testing we've got the cards coming in here and the material testing packs. And then this one is producing cold thermodynamics data. So that means he needs to bring in the cold thermofluid, freeze the material testing science pack and have a look at it, see what happens. You get some information out of that and then that contaminates some scrap. So you chuck out some contaminated scrap which then just flows away down the system to be dealt with elsewhere and warms your thermofluid up as well of course. 
Uh, so this is all. Yeah, so he's got a yeah, he's got a huge number of machines doing the cold down here, and then up here we've got the hot, which is basically the same thing, but instead of putting in cold thermofluid, you put in plasma stream because that's hot clearly. Um, I suppose we should just be glad it's not putting in uh, pyroflux or something like that. Um, Again, with the data cards, you burn the testing packs, you, you find out information about it, and that exports contaminated scrap as well, because you've turned, you basically you turn the material testing pack into scrap. That's how this works. So those will all flow out down here. We've got, um, I, oh yeah, so he's got a belt coming up here to take the, um, to take the, uh, the hot, the, the cold data and the hot data. Those those splitters need to be reprogrammed. Um, hopefully he'll notice that before he starts actually producing science or he's going to dump all of his hot science down the um, down the disposal chute and then we'll, everyone will be cross with him. But then this will merge the two onto a, onto a belt here. They can be passed on and eventually they'll be made into the catalogues but he's got two more stages of... Um, of material science, two more data card types to do first, and then you can turn all of that into the uh, into into the catalogs and feed them into a train to be sent over to, to be scienced. So yeah, some good progress there. I know he's got a lot more of this designed in the blueprint system. We can't look at that because I think he's been doing it in his own private blueprints, but that's fine. Um, we shall see what the, we will um, we'll see see over over the next week or two as he, as he builds up the rest of it, and we can and we can start doing them doing material science, and that'll be quite nice because you get some fun stuff with material science, or at least material science is required in combination with other stuff to get some cool things like well. Power Armor Mark III, that's quite nice. Bet Immersite Weapons, that sounds mildly interesting. What is that? Is that a railgun of some sort? An impulse rifle. Okay, cool. Um, and then things like... Uh, no, spaceship, sp spaceship isn't one of his. But yeah, you, as, as you can see, there's going to be various things we can do that are going to use the uh, going to use the, the material science and get exciting stuff. Uh, railguns will definitely be a thing from that as well. It seems he hasn't got the thermofluid being pumped in here yet. Oh yes, he put in a thermofluid processing facility over here. And I then immediately asked him why he didn't just copy and paste the one that I've built that is work, work, works and is basically finished. Um, he didn't have a particularly good reason for that. I think he just doesn't really trust me. Uh, but anyway, he's got, he's got a system here which is now pulling in. Yeah, he's pulled in a load of thermofluid. Um, this tank is basically empty, but that's it's, but it's not quite empty, so that's okay. Um, and he's now got the sort of the expected 5,000 uh, cool and 5,000 cold. And pumps to earn a pump to take the cold off a bit. To where it's needed so yeah that seems it, it, it'll work i'm not i'm not going to criticize it too much it seems basically okay <laughs> it's probably also mentioning in passing that um, part of the reason that uh, Mike hasn't ex hasn't expanded for even further than this is because there was a bit of a shortage of some of the things he needed for building. And again, that is what I'm going. Tomorrow is going to be talking about all of the all of the shortages we, we've been having and how things have been how things have been been problematic and and how Mark, who I've, as, as you as the uh, the sharp the sharp eared among you will have noticed, I haven't mentioned yet what he was up to yesterday. So that brings us to the end of today's episode. Thank you very much for watching. Please check out the channel sponsor. That's trefoil.be. If you use the code Lawrence Plays on checkout, you can get. 20% off hosting for a, a Minecraft, a Factorio, or various other game servers. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow with a, with the other half of this update video where we shall touch on what Mark has been doing and how and all the crises that have been happening everywhere other than on this space station. Actually, no, the crises, the crises have been happening on this space station uh, and they've just sort of yacked back to the crises for, for, for further up the chain, as is always the way in Factorio. But conveniently, um, I don't have to go off and fix all of those myself because I have Mark to help out there. So very much appreciated, very much appreciated there. And then on Monday, there'll be the next stream where we'll be carrying on with all of this stuff and trying to get things up and built and working and, um, and and just generally running in a much more efficient and effective way and, you know, trying to solve every single problem that I've brought up today and probably some of the ones I've brought up tomorrow as well. And one night probably won't even won't be enough to do all of that, so we'll, <laughs> we'll be carrying on with that the Monday after. Wednesday is XCOM stream night. Uh, things are going kind of well there. I do keep getting soldiers killed. Very sorry about that. But we are gradually making headway against the alien menace, as far as I can tell. So please come along to that uh, stream. So come along, uh, lend your support, lend your lend your cheers, and you can and you can have the fun and excitement of voting on how or betting on how many soldiers you think I'm going to lose on any individual uh, any individual mission. <laughs> There will, of course, be other videos coming out here and there on the channel. Um, it's a little bit up in the air at the moment. There's about four different series that I want to make more videos for, so it just really, it's, it's all down to a matter of time. But we have a long weekend, so we shall see. I might be able to get some videos made over the weekend. <laughs> so, once again, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the stream, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs>